we can look at what I'm calling micro anomalies or little, little features of writing, such as what we call ink blobs and goops and so on. This is an example of my writing from 1979 to 2009. Whenever I write a lowercase y or j or something of that nature, there is always a little blob of ink right there. I can't help it. Always. And that's, what, that's actually what led me to doing the research on that to find out, is it the writer or is it the pen? Because over 30 years, these are done with different pens. And the research showed that it is the writer and the pen. It's an interaction from a statistical perspective. So we talk about two types of inter-writer variability. There's what's called common cause. And that's that what common cause variability is, is variability that we can explain. We look at it and we say, well, we, we can understand that that's just part of natural variation. And, and that's what we tend to call it in document examination is natural variation rather than common cause, which was what statisticians call it. And an example of that is when you're driving down the freeway, you're not staying straight on that, at, in, that, in that lane. You're deviating a little bit, and we can explain that. Yep. But if you go off, then that's what we call special cause, which we can't necessarily explain. Maybe the person's arm got jostled. Maybe the person got disturbed. Maybe something else happened. Maybe the person was upset and just kind of scribbled. But we can't explain. So we, what we would do is, on those types of exemplars, we would exclude them because it doesn't fit with anything normal as we see the, the natural variation of the writer. But there are many reasons why a person's writing can vary. Over time, it can be age. I had a situation a few years ago where I asked the attorney, I had these exemplars, and I said, well, the writing seems to have changed in 2008. What happened? Is it really the same person? He said, oh, yeah, injury to the arm. That explained it. That's why the writing changed and was consistent thereafter with that change. Disease, people get ill. Other things happen. We'll see a situation later where there's a lot of tremor in the writing, and that's because when I was doing the examination, and we went, to, we went up to uh, ho hospital to look at the hospital records to get the exemplars, well, in those hospital records, it talked about the drugs he was on. And one of the side effects of one of those drugs was tremor. So was it strange that there was tremor in his writing? No. So other act aspects that can come into play. I had a situation where it was a criminal case of, uh, where I was retained by the San Diego County uh, Prosecutor's Office. The person had to sign late at night sign a traffic citation. The question is, did he sign that traffic citation? Well, in that situation, it was very, all I could give is a very qualified opinion for the reason that if you're sitting in the car, getting the, getting the, the citation pad, writing a pen when it's dark at night, your writing's probably going to be a little bit different. So, that's a situation where just the position you're in, the circumstances, you can get deviations. But possible special causes, again, we said that the person's arm may have been bumped, may have had unusual writing position, and several other reasons. Cooper and Hedrick, who wrote a book, it's called Handwriting Identification, Facts and Fundamentals, it was published in 1999, is probably the best authority on handwriting identification that's been published most recently. They, they cite 21 different attributes that we would look for in handwriting identification, yet we don't always look at all of them. They're not always, always, th they're not always there. For example, diactrics. For example, if the person puts, uh, puts I dots, if there are no I dots in the name, you don't have them. 
if you have those little umlauts in a German name, or if you have the two, the uh, two dots in some names, or the the, the, uh, the like the accent marks in Spanish names, if you don't have them, you don't have them, and so it's, it doesn't come into play. Abbreviations. If the person doesn't abbreviate, doesn't use initials, you don't look at that. But what we have here are 21 different attributes that we can look at and we can use to come up with a more quantitative measure, more direct measure. I also use other attributes. I use micro anomalies when I have originals. And unfortunately, these days, getting original documents with ink signature, it's few and far between. We get PDFs, we get photocopies, we get scans and JPEGs and so on.